What's going on guys? Um, welcome to my channel. Today uh, I'm talking about Vortec heads and putting beehive springs on them. Um, there's uh, again, just like a lot of the stuff on the internet, there's a little bit of a misinformation, a miscommunication between all this. Uh, but today I want to talk about how to add um, beehive springs, LS, or um, aftermarket beehive springs to your Vortec head, your stock Vortec head without cutting uh, the guides down. So the big issue with the Vortec heads is uh, the lift is very limited because what happens is the retainer hits a seal and I'm sure everyone has read that uh, that's looking into Vortec heads and I'm just going to show you exactly what they mean. This is actually the aftermarket uh, retainer and these are the stock keepers but I want to show you what happens, um, what, what they mean by the seal retainer hits a seal is when at max lift the retainer bottoms out on the actual um, valve guide where the seal where the seal is and it will destroy the seal and if it's really bad uh, if you're bottoming it hard it'll actually you know bend push rods break things uh, and just not be a good time so what your options are um, which seems to be the standard is to go to the blue LS6 spring um, which do work really well I've used I've used a few sets and uh, never had issues um, and there's also an option from comp cams, which is, um, their beehive spring, which is just very similar to the LS6 spring with a little bit more, um, pressure, seat pressure and open pressure and a little more, uh, lift to coil bind. So that's another option. And that, that right there is, uh, those, those springs are part number, if you can see that, uh, two, two, nine or sorry 26906-16 I'll put the I'll put that in the description if people are interested in those and same with the part number for the the um, pack of 16 of the GM uh, performance LS6 springs um, so what you need to know basically is how to check uh, the seal to uh, retainer clearance uh, and what I do is I'll put it all together like this and so that's so that's your open lift and which a lot of guys do is they just drop the the stock springs in or sorry not the stock springs the stock LS6 springs the vort the beehive springs and they don't really check this this distance right here which is your from here to here is your installed height so when you when you install um a set of springs there's always a spec for installed height on the LS uh, LS6 springs it's 1.8 inches but in fact, when you put these uh, comp retainers, 787-16, which are the retainers made to work on these Vortec heads or a lot of uh, small block heads with the LS springs, this distance isn't 1.8 inches. It's actually less than that. Um, it's about it's about 50 thou less, so 1.75 um, versus the 1.8. Uh, so right there, installing those it kind of skews all the springs numbers. Uh, it just skews the, the um, open or the closed height uh, because you're adding that like lift to it, 50 thou lift. Uh, you're changing, you're actually you're technically reducing the amount of lift that you think you can have on that spring because uh, these stocks, these springs stock will take 550 lift, but you're already reducing it by, by 50 thou. So it really only take 500 lift. So what you got to do is you got to measure in between. What, when I, what I typically do is I'll take a coat hanger, uh, like a metal coat hanger, and I'll cut it. And then you can see there, that's that's uh, 1.8 installed. And see how it doesn't fit? And then here's 50 thou less, and it'll fit in between. So I'll take a, a coat hanger, measure it, and then cut it close and then kind of grind it down till it's the right size and then you just and then you just measure it and get it as close as you can um, so that that right there will show you that that's 50 thou off that's with the stock retainers so from here all open to full lift um, in between here I actually cut one goes in between small one and I wanted to see this is with the stock Nothing's been cut. This is the stock um, um, valve seal and everything. So I wanted to show people that are just putting them on and thinking, you know, oh, I can do 520 lift because that's what I read online or 550 lift or whatever. So stock for stock right now from open to close. Uh, so what I'm going to do is 
So we know this is 1.750. So I'll put that in the calculator. 1.750. Okay. And then all the way down, I took one and measured it. Where did that little one go? In between here and here, all the way up. And this is with it touching the seal. Okay. So you take that, and that's actually minus 1.220. So that distance from here to here is 1.220, which I took that coat hanger, ground it down until it fit, and that's with it touching the seal. So right now, you you take the 1.750 open height, and then the or sorry the um, the closed height, and then you minus it from the 1.220 open height. That gives you 0.53, so 530 thou lift, okay? So that doesn't mean you can run 530 thou because right now you're actually hitting the retainer. So there there you go right now, we just proved with the stock keepers and um, that comp 787-16, you can't run 530 thou because you're actually hitting the retainer. So what I typically like is there's, there's a lot of different specs out there but I like to run a minimum of 50 thou clearance between the retainer and the um, the seal so minimum 50 thou uh, you kind of want more a lot of times I've seen up towards a 90 thou recommended but I've run 50 thou never had an issue with uh, banging out the seals or anything like that um, I've seen 30 thou people say that's a little tight for my liking so I'll, I'll usually run 50 thou so what that means is bottomed out and then 50 thou up so you have that little bit of gap in between uh, so if you take the fifth so 530 thou and then you minus 50 thou off that to give you your clearance oops, sorry 0 0.530 minus 0 0.050 that gives you 480 thou so now you can really only run 480 thou safely on this head with the stock keepers so the option in there is, and so this is what you, a lot of times they don't tell you or you read online, is what you can get are what are called offset keepers. You see the difference here? So you can see, see where the line is and that fits and that locks the, see how that one's offset? And what that does, this is called a 50 thou offset keeper. Let's fight me with the gloves on. Okay, that brings this retainer up 50 thou. So now you take your 1.8 rod that I measured before is 1.8 which wouldn't fit with the stock retainers and now it fits perfectly in between okay actually it's a little bit this one I cut a little bit shorter but this is 1.8 almost bang on right now so now you're at the actual spec of what these these either of these springs are supposed to be installed at so 1.8 inches so now you take the same thing before we had 48 thou you can go through the whole process of measuring back all this minus we know that that stays that stays the same the distance between here and here but you just added 50 thou so now you take your 0.48 from before 480 thou you add um, your 50 thou now you're back up to 530 thou so that gives you that your seal your seal um, to retainer clearance and allows you to run to 530,000 lift without cutting anything. So there you go. But the one thing you do have to watch um, when you're doing these offset keepers is I don't know if you can see too good on the camera. I'll try to zoom in a little bit. You can see see that lip there. The, this is your valve tip. You got to watch with um, self-aligning rockers that you'll normally use on these um, on these uh, Vortec heads. They don't have guide plates typically. Uh, see how on the um, intake valve, it's even less of a tip. So you have to wash with self-aligning rockers that you aren't pushing on the um, the the valve guide. Or sorry, the valve guide, the valve retainer, or the keepers when you're when you're uh, at full lift. You'll oftentimes because they're because they center on the tip. There's a little lip that will you gotta sometimes depending on the make of the rocker arm. Um, I've had ones that are really close and I'll check them and I'll just file them a little bit. You can't file them right off because it needs that has to center on that tip. But that's a thing to watch. But you won't have that because because with the offset keepers you're bringing it up, but with the stock ones you won't. 50 thou, you can see there. 
See, there's more of a tip. So, 480,000 lift is safe with stock keepers, but if you're running over that, you really should go to offset keepers. You just, like I said, have to watch that tip clearance. Um, I've never had an issue. Some people have said they don't, the valve springs don't fit. Um, either one, I've had it fit over the, the guide. No problem over the guides. I don't have to cut anything. I've run either one. Uh, all right, the other thing I want to touch base on is screw in rocker studs on the Vortec heads. The stock Vortec heads have a press in rocker stud. Um, and it's a it's a big thing about if you need to upgrade to a screw in. Uh, this is the ones I typically run for a screw in. They're like an incognito kind of uh, um, rocker stud, and you don't have to machine the guy. But this is you still have to run if you're running these. You still have to run um, self centering rocker arms. Where if you get the the bosses cut down when you put these pulled, you can run the. Um, the guide plates so you can run guide plates so you can so you don't have to run a self-aligning rock around these incognitos are ones are nice you can do it yourself at home i actually will probably make a video of how i do these um when i pull them and how i thread them and, and these ones i've never had an issue with them um they work pretty good these ones are made by pioneer i'll, I'll have to get a part number on the next video when i do um the press in ones so do i recommend them i always recommend screw and studs I've had seen, not on any of my own, because I usually, if it's a bigger cam or anything, I will, I'll just go ahead and do the uh, the screw and studs. But I have seen guys pull them. But I've also heard of guys running, you know, heavy springs, heavier than these beehive springs, and have not pulled them. Um, so it's really up to you. Always a good idea. And I'll show you, it's pretty easy. Uh, the hardest part is actually just probably just pulling them out sometimes they can be stubborn like that so that's some of them pull out really easy is the ones that scare me and some of them pull out pretty hard so it's not something you want to risk i don't i would say um especially depending on the size if you're running a 480 lift something like around 480 lift not crazy duration not revving the heck out of it you're probably okay with these preston studs but that's a risk that you have to decide if you want to take. Um, it's like while you're here, you might as well, if you have the heads off and everything, you might as well just pull them and, and do it because it's something you can do yourself. And if you really want to send them in and have the a mill down and do, uh, and do guide plates, that's another option too. The rocker arms are way cheaper if you do uh, um, non-self-aligning, like if you want to go like a roller tip. Um, but it's, it's always recommended, especially with a heavier spring. Because you, you don't know. You, it's not a risk you want to take. So that's my little bit on the <laughs> the screwing studs. I know some guys, you know, don't think you need to do it. It's, it's very flip-flop on the internet. Well, I, I personally like to do it because I, when I pull them, some of them come out easy. And it's just nice to have something that threads in. You know it's not going to come out. So there you go, guys. Like and subscribe, please. Um, I want to start making more of these videos and introducing.